Um, Nat Gass, you say, is all about weather, right? It's getting colder. The forecasts are calling for colder weather, so no surprise to you. No, look, the latest weather runs have really been a lot colder, and potentially next week we are calling for a triple-digit withdrawal uh, from storage the first this season. And then, of course, you've got the rail strikes, uh, which is affecting, or oh, which could potentially uh, impact coal movement. So that's kind of adding further to the impetus. But yeah, the, the weather run has really been uh, very, very bullish for nat gas prices this week. All right, let's talk crude because we did see a, a you know, 4% drop on close here, Amrita. And a lot of this is the, the price cap. I mean, that, that decision's coming up. The proposed price cap is higher than what many people had thought, um, according to Reuters reports, 65 to 70. Um, why was that a surprise, and, and why do you think they moved higher? So uh, just a couple of points on the price cap. We are hearing the price cap will be around $65. Um, and right now, Russian crude euros is trading at around 60 or even slightly lower than that after today's correction in flat price. Now, the price cap does not impact Europe's ability to buy Russian oil. I think that's the problem and that's the confusion in the market. The issue is, remember, the EU is coming up with the embargo on the 5th of December. That supersedes the price cap. But the confusion in the market is, and particularly in the U.S., we have so many clients constantly asking us, oh, does this change your view on how much Russian oil can flow into Europe? No. The EU is still going to go ahead with the embargo, which means come 5th of December, barring the countries that have been exempt, Europe cannot import Russian oil. The price cap is about other countries, like in Asia. The reason Europe is working with the U.S. to come up with this number is because Europe is home to 95% of maritime services, so shipping, insurance, things like that. So that's what they are trying to ease. The price cap was always about the rest of the world's ability to buy Russian oil. Okay, so can you factor in China at this point, Amrita? I mean, <laughs> before when it was looked at, China was, was opening up, because China, I'm assuming, is, is part of that part of the world that would be affected potentially by the price caps or would fall under, under that sort of group of countries. Now we have the opposite picture where we're, have, we're having increased lockdowns at this point. So how does that impact everything? I would say China, much more than Russia, has been one of the biggest drivers and probably will be the bigger driver for 2023 prices um, for the simple reason that the swing in Chinese demand could be over a million barrels per day, depending on the lockdowns. Back in April, it was two million barrels per day. And Chinese buying has been extremely erratic. And our view has been for some time that uh, reopening is really not going to happen until April, at the very earliest. It's probably going to take even longer, and it's going to be slow. In terms of the price cap, no other country uh, has actually accepted the price cap. It's only the G7. So for all the headlines and the hoo-ha around the price cap, what is very, very interesting right now is that unless and until other countries actually accept it, and Russia, who has said, I'm not going to sell uh, under the price cap anyways, accepts the price cap, it's a bit of a moot point, but the confusion it creates is why prices are down today. Right. I also want to ask you about FTX, which I never thought I would say to you, Emery. <laughs> um, but you actually noted in one of your research reports that initially when there was the collapse of FTX and we saw the fallout in cryptocurrencies, we also saw oil fall. Do you believe that that sort of um, relationship will continue or, or was that just the initial shock of it? Yeah, I also never thought the amount of research I've had to do on FTX, I'm like, what is this? And our economists were like, stop calling it correlation. It's not a real correlation, which is true. But Melissa, the problem is we're in November, right? We always get sell-offs like this in November before Thanksgiving. Liquidity dries up. And that's why you get crazy correlations like this, because you don't have specialists trading in this market. So you get random correlations like Bitcoin or just generally crypto with crude. Now, there is some genuine issues around asset allocation. We have seen move away from energy or oil in particular to equities, for sure. And also, we've heard from some institutional clients who've had to sell their oil positions to effectively get some margin to be able to uh, warehouse their risk around crypto. So sure, uh, there's some genuine relationship, but it's genuinely much more to do with 
just the lack of liquidity in November every year. Last year, we had a similar sell-off around the SPR. A couple of years ago, we had the same thing. So Thanksgiving, around Thanksgiving, it always becomes a bit of a Black Friday. All right. And Rena, thank you. Fascinating.